Hello guys, and I just gotta say right off the bat, I'm really stupid. I literally just recorded to this cinematic. I talked for like 20 minutes and I didn't hit the record button. I pretty much stopped the recording, so I'm gonna react again. Now, generally, I don't really do these types of reaction videos, but this cinematic, I just had to do it. I did one back on, with Enzot, but this one is like key. I've talked about this uh, in like... 20, 30, 50 videos I talked about this scenario, so I just had to give you like my first initial thoughts. Now, of course, I'm not even gonna pretend like these are my first thoughts because they're not. I literally just recorded the video and I've also watched the video as soon as I opened my eyes this morning. I've also watched it on a, on my mobile phone, so I couldn't understand a single word the jailer was saying. So I just wanna go through this thematic. I wanna go through the Ganosh one, if you guys have seen it. And then I wanna talk about the contrast and see like what is my, what are my actual thoughts on this and the way the story is going. So let's start off. We got the orb obvious confirmation that this is the jailer and the arbiter pretty much everyone saw this coming you know the hole in his chest this guy has the hole there's this orb so quick scene of course it still hasn't been confirmed whether the jailer is the actual arbiter or not we still don't really know that savannah slips in Claims his ultimate form. He looks really cool. Now, here's the thing: like, is if you guys can see this armor, um, it is really hard to like. I've talked about like that original concept art. I gotta say, it actually looks kind of similar. I think they obviously abandoned that art with the gold and the some of the chains but i gotta say it looks quite similar if you look at the shoulder pads and everything it is very similar to that leaked jailer art that we have seen pretty much before the expansion was even released now a big problem is and this is just constructive criticism for blizzard you guys gotta lower the boost on this jailer guy i literally cannot understand a single thing he's saying like i understand one word and i can't understand like three words i pretty much had to re-listen to some of these uh sentences his monologues like five times to understand what exactly he's saying <laughs> completely expected he cheats everyone wants to enslave everyone domination magic the way is open so far. We already have Savannah feels a bit of a uh, feels bad for everyone what else. We need. I do the maker's this sentence I could not understand. I'm guessing he said he endured the maker's flawed design. I'm guessing the makers are the first one, so he's talking about this mechanism. Pretty much all the new lore that I've talked about in the previous video. If you wanna learn more, you can check out the video I did. Enslaved Anduin, sort of a contrast between Enslaved Anduin and Savannah's who is sort of has free will, but obviously she doesn't. The voice of Artis, really cool, but also kind of stupid at the same time. The slowest arrow in the universe. This is like... It's, it's hilarious because she's he has worked he's, she's has been like his most loyal agent and uh he's like oh no anyway like he completely did not care about her like he completely expected her to betray him i will never serve again cool but also kind of stupid like we've no if you guys have followed my videos and if you follow the folks in the fairy tales we've known about this stuff i've talked about this this is the illusion of choice pretty much the jailer had a portion of sylvanas's soul and he uh essentially manipulated her and then got her into this plan so she believes that she's working with him and everything it was a complete illusion of choice he pretty much enslaved her and i'm kind of surprised this sylvanas is usually seen as the intelligent character how she didn't exactly see this coming he obviously enslaved her it's not like she had a great choice i mean she started to doubt him in that cinematic with uh denatrius when he completely abandoned him um, abandoned him and sylvana started to doubt whether he's really fighting for free will but i gotta say it was kind of obvious that this guy was not fighting for free will Still 
Uh, one second, I just want to talk about this. Like, this armor looks broken. It obviously looks like the Torghast stuff, but kind of has, like, a weird... Uh, Arden build vibe to it, like this sort of looks like a tree, so I don't know if there's this might be like a hint to some connection between a loon, Arden build, and the jailer. It's really weird. More than likely, or obviously, grabs her soul, the portion that I talked about. Nothing new. Now, I was wondering whether him crushing it actually means something, or whether the way for him to return her soul is to crush the crystal and then the soul is gonna get it released. Now, as you can see here, like this uh, blue spirit thing, I'm guessing that is the other portion of her of her soul that he returned to her. Again, no idea what he's saying. Oh, he leaves her uh, to bear mercy. And in Hollow's camp, we don't really know where. This is gonna be a huge deal with, with the future of the story. Compass of Arian. I'm guessing somehow Arian is gonna get involved in this story and that will help us break Adrian free. Ultimately. Is... So Sylvanas is now at our mercy. Cannot let him break. Blue eyes. <laughs> it's it's a bit stupid, like she has blue eyes, so she's good now. <laughs> I'm guessing she, she was gonna say reach the sepulcher. Almost certain she was gonna say that. We still don't know what the sepulcher is. I'm guessing it's gonna be somehow related to Azeroth. We still don't know exactly what is going on. But so far, my thoughts on this cinematic is... I'm really kind of just neutral on it. I think it is kind of stupid, but it is also really cool at the same time. I, I'm just not completely certain what to say. Like, the thing is, like, I completely saw this coming. Like, this was completely expected. Like, this did not catch me off guard at all. Of course, I had a few scenarios. I thought we were either gonna defeat her or something is gonna happen with her soul. But obviously, something did happen with her soul and she did ultimately betray him. They pretty much just gave us the hints with her eyes in the King's Morn cinematic and in the Denatrius cinematic when he forges the King's Morn. So, this completely was not shocking at all. However, let me just uh, react to the second cinematic, and then I'm gonna talk about like my ultimate uh, thoughts on it, and also the contrast between the two, so I'm gonna look at the Garrosh one. Here is the Garrosh cinematic. Again, if you guys don't know, he was in Revendred, he was sent to the Maw, he didn't want to repent for his sins. I must answer for my crime. I gotta say, like, this is probably the best cinematic out there. It's sort of like a meme, but it is actually really cool. I really kind of sort of felt the chills with this. They said I must answer for my crimes. I guess he's talking about the war crimes on Azeroth and repent for my sins. He's talking about Revendreth and the sins they made him repent. Repent for my or sins. But every <laughs> <laughs> this is just glad like he completely doubled down this. Honestly, I didn't expect this. I expected something was going to happen in Garage, but my thoughts were that we were either going to free him or he's going to realize that he was the bad guy, but he pretty much just doubled down on everything. I would proudly make a game. You will submit. Really cool. To no one. Not you. Not the jailer. I wonder why he called a uh, coward troll. I'm guessing either because he cheated in the Magora or um, I think it is more likely the case that he thought troll was a coward because he allied with the alliance, he didn't want to expand the horde, he wanted to do the things diplomatically, so he was a coward in his eyes. Coward <laughs> the... Really cool, really cool. I gotta say, this is kind of stupid, but hilarious and really cool at the same time. I honestly gotta say, like, this is literally the perfect ending for Garrosh. And I think the way they put Garrosh together with the ending with Sylvanas, well, the ending with Sylvanas, is because it is sort of a contrast, because both are really, like, the villains, like, the really bad war chiefs. And now this is, like, how Garrosh ended and what is gonna happen with Sylvanas. So, first off, if you guys can follow the story of uh, Garrosh and uh, Grom, Hellscream, and the Orcs, I gotta say, like... I'm guessing Grom would be really proud of Garrosh here. Even though he was a bad guy, he did all that stuff. It's not like Grom was uh, cool either. 
but you know Grom, his father Grom Hellscream was known for his iron will. If you watch the Ogre cinematic, it's pretty much like he they tortured him, they did everything possible, and he did not break. He was known for his iron will. So Garrosh, I'm guessing in this scenario, well, not guessing, he surpassed his father very much so because you know Grom, the Ogre tortured him, but with Garrosh, uh, you know he was tortured within Revendreth by a realm that is specialized in torturing and getting you to repent for their sins so they have been doing this for thousands of years so they're like the experts at torturing if you guys can play the Revendreth you've seen what they do like they send these souls to feel hunted and they do all sorts of torture and like the worst possible methods and Garrosh completely endured all this stuff he was sent to the maw he was tortured by the jailer and chained you have seen what if you've been in Torghast, you have seen what they do and just in the mall. And Garrosh kept his iron will of his father this entire time. And he just doubled down on it. Now, despite Garrosh obviously being a bad guy, I gotta say I really respect him for it. It was really like the way for an orc to end his existence. Like, I'm guessing his father would be really proud of him. Now, the contrast between this and the other cinematic is because both Garrosh and uh, Savannah are obviously bad guys. Garrosh, Mana Bomb, Terramor, Sylvanas burned the city of Teldrassil. But the big difference is, Garrosh did all this stuff for the Horde, even if his last words were for the Horde. Now, he did want power for himself, but the reason he wanted power was because he wanted to empower the Horde, he wanted the Horde to conquer Azeroth, he wanted to do everything for his people. Now, he was a bit uh, picky who were his people, but yeah. He was at least altruistic in one way, while on the other hand, Sylvanas, as we have learned, pretty much did all this stuff because the Jailer had a portion of her soul, so he essentially manipulated her, so she just wanted to get her own soul back. She was talking about this free will, all this stuff, but essentially she just wanted to do everything for herself. So, I gotta say, there's definitely a bit of a contrast here, how Garrosh is a bit more altruistic, even though they are both bad guys. Now... I think it is, there is also a reason why Garrosh's story ended at the same time as Sylvanas. Now, as I said, with the new cinematic, I'm really um, worried. I know a lot of people are hating. They say, like, they just redeemed Sylvanas. Like, this is the end. It's really stupid what they did. Now, of course, they didn't redeem Sylvanas. But we really are at, like, a crossroads right now with what is going to happen. Because... Sylvanas has now been left to our mercy when they said our they also meant the players and everyone she it, it, it is kind of cool because You would expect the jailer he would just end her but he wanted her to like experience how he was just being cruel because he is cruel So that scenario where I talked about him being a good guy. I'm guessing I was wrong on that like this guy is just cruel so he wanted to Give her soul back so that she would feel resentment and that she would feel her blood elven self. You can even see her voice kind of changes. So that she would feel bad for everything he did. And now she's pre we are the ones that are going to decide her fate. And she did quite a few bad things. You can watch my video. I made like a top 10 list on her crimes that you can check out on the channel. I pretty much listed all the bad stuff. But yeah, she did quite a bit of bad stuff. However... What is gonna happen is gonna be critical. I'm almost certain, like, almost completely certain that she is more, more than likely going to um, serve as... And for we're gonna use her for information because, like, she is the inside agent of the Jailer. So she knows what his exact goal is, who he is, what is going on. So she's gonna more than likely explain all that stuff. But what is gonna happen after is really worrying to say the least i feel like either um if they go like the route of how jaina and Volvar are gonna be cool they don't want to be the bad guys so they're gonna give her a fair and just trial i think that would be really stupid because you know savannah's burned an entire city like there's really no redemption for for all this stuff even though she was enslaved and everything like she was a bad guy like there's just no going around it my honestly best case scenario for the story ending is that she gives us the information and then she helps us fight the jailer and then she like sacrifices herself to do like the for like saves us or does something else and then she doesn't really redeem herself but at least 
she does one good thing out of all the million bad things she did now that she has her soul back i think that would be the best scenario now of course that wouldn't be like the best case scenario ever but like with the way the situation is currently set up i think that would be the best case scenario once again as I said, I'm kind of neutral on the cinematic. I think there's some really cool moments. I'm also kind of worried what is going to happen later. And some things are a bit cheesy and very predictable. I totally saw this coming. It really didn't catch me off guard. But do let me know what you guys think about the cinematic. What are your thoughts on Sylvanas, this cinematic, her storyline, who the jailer is. And also what do you think about the ending of Garrosh's character and his entire storyline. So, I'll make a video on these topics, like in details, like more edited stuff. But I just wanted to, like, do my sort of raw reaction despite me goofing about and just uh i already recorded my reaction so i'm talking about this like these points the second time but yeah do let me know what you guys think and see you in the next video